thank you for being here at home or wherever you are because together we are worshiping God. Now one of the ways I thought it would help us feel closer is if we have a shared lighting of the candles. You know, in our, we generally, pre-COVID, we would light the candles. So if you don't have them at home, that's fine, but you can go get one or a flashlight. Don't play with matches though, okay? And we will be lighting these together as a way to feel close to one another uh, and the people at home. Before I begin though, I wanna tell you who's in the house. I wanna thank Tom Anderson, our music director. I always love his preludes. Dr. O, Christine Allfeld, our um, education and discipleship minister. We're nodding yes. My beloved husband, and the reason I'm telling you he's my husband is I don't wear a mask around him, so if I'm standing close, do not get a panic attack, okay? We're close frequently. Okay. <laughs> He is also the Minister of Youth. And in the house, we also have our tech crew, Chris Kozich, David Kozich, and Ron Birchall. And I appreciate your hard, hard work, you all. We almost have a quorum of Steves in the house. We have um, Steve Kozich, Steve Sanders, and Steve Henkel. So, and I know that uh, the other Steves have good reasons to be and adventures. We have Clementine's grandmother, Julie Story. We have the Brineys, and we have Nick. And I want to call you Mr. Derbyshire, but that's not your last name. Perkinson, there, thank you. Will Perkinson. I, you're not, he'll be getting married soon, and he's marrying Meredith uh, Derbyshire, and for some reason I have you taking her name. I don't think that's going to happen. But no, it isn't. <laughs> and, and we have um, the Smiths, Tricia and Jim. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being present. Now let us, uh, we're going to prepare to worship, but we also are going to have announcements. Let's do the announcements first, and then we'll light the candle. Um, I have a list. I have a little list and it's right on front. I need liturgists. We need people to do word with children. Presbyterians uh, ask for lay involvement. And we're gonna even let you pre-record a section. So if you'd like to read scripture, contact me. If you'd like to do a children's moment, contact Christine. Um, there's other, other elements that we can pre-record or if you're one of the um, confident ones joining us, come and be a liturgist, that would be great. Presbyterian readers are meeting on Wednesday, October 21st, and they're reading a book about code women. Julie, what's the official title? Uh, all right, let me see. It's in your, it's in your liturgy. That's the, ah, here it is. The Uncold Girls, the untold story of the American women code breakers of World War II. I don't know why you couldn't remember that title. And uh, every Thursday evening, we have a Zoom Bible study. Every Sunday following worship, we have an online Bible study. And I have a phone Bible study. Um, I can take a couple of people on Fridays. Please look for that. We are going to be celebrating All Saints service. Is that Angela? Good to see you. Another Smith. Um, we are going to have, all right, somebody's phone is buzzing. And we need you to turn. Okay. Nope. We have uh, All Saints Sunday coming the first Sunday in November. If you have someone you want to remember. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Um, all Saints is the first Sunday in November. If you have someone that you would like to give thanks to God for who has passed on, please get that information into the office and we will uh, include them in our All Saints uh, observation. And finally, um, Marie Shepherd uh, is a member of our congregation who's at Windscape, but she is also recently widowed. 
And her and her family want to thank you for your expressions of love and concern. Um, she wanted me to put a sign up in the narthex, and I reminded her that that's probably not the biggest way to distribute news. But she is deeply grateful. And then, look at this. I have a pig in my pocket. Have you ever put on your coat and found something? Please tell us a little bit about the stewardship, Chris. worship uh, the YouTube or Facebook video later. Before this got started, we had a virtual pig roast. We had a slideshow where we showed a lot of pictures of people having dinner with Flat Piggy. We can kind of remember that we are, even if we can't see each other every week, we're a congregation. We'll get back together, but this way we can be together virtually. Okay. Not the whole thing. No. I told you about Flat Piggy. Send us your picture. Send a picture of yourself, your family, your friends, having a meal or just gathering with Flat Piggy. And we'll include you in the slideshow also. It's, and you can also check it out on our, our um, website at the bottom of the page. Just click on Flat Piggy and you'll see it. Another thing that's in your stewardship mailing is a pledge card. Um, we give every year. We give to support this building, although that is by far not the major expense. We spend most of our money doing things, paying people, doing programs, and we're fortunate that we do have a, an endowment to help with some of the big unexpected things, so that's a blessing. Um, but why do we pledge? Some churches don't pledge. Some other faith traditions don't pledge. You either just give or you're given a bill. We pledge. Now, we're Presbyterians. It makes sense to us. We like to do things absolutely in order, have a balanced budget um, that's driven by the, the elected representatives of the church. We decide how much is coming in and then how much we are budgeting to spend. So that's the practical side. But biblically, why do we pledge? I mean, you could just show up and give what's in your pocket. You know, when you see the Salvation Army bell ringer, you might dig in your pocket, give a little there. If you didn't see him, you might not give. It's, it's a nice thing to give to the Salvation Army bell ringer, but we like to be intentional. We like to put God first. We like to pledge from our blessings, pledge intentionally, and by making a pledge, you signal you know, you, you, you think about it. You make it a priority. So we ask you, this is the time of year where we ask people to turn in a pledge card if you can. We understand if you can't. We understand if times have changed. But um, this is the time of year where we do ask for a pledge card. Um, and our message this year, you see a little, I call it the squiggle. And some, I drew this so we wouldn't have any copyright concerns. I, I give you my copyright. Got a little squiggle there. Um, but the, me, the, the verse is from 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. The people at the time, some of them, including the Apostle Paul, had seen Christ in the flesh. But everything was different. Everything was new. Everything, their old ways, whether they were previously Jewish, whether they were previously, you know, um, it, 
worship the Roman gods, whatever, whatever they did previously, everything was new. They had to put the old aside. And that's kind of what we are this year. We're thinking back on the way things were. We're hoping we can get back again. But this has been an opportunity to try new things. We're reaching people at home in ways that we never could before. If you're watching at home now, you are being reached. And hopefully we can continue doing that no matter what. We're trying new things. We're being forced to do new things. I don't think, I'm not saying God threw this at us, but he's asking us to step up. And so we're, you know, we're recognizing that things are new, things are different, and pledges are coming in nicely. We ask you to prayerfully continue, or to prayerfully consider making a pledge. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we light the candles. Let us pray for one another. Pray for our musicians and our leaders of worship. Pray for our sound system. Let us worship God together. May the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, Please join us for the call to worship as written in our bulletins. Those of you at home can join us in words. Those of us in the sanctuary, please do it in your thoughts. God has set God's seal upon our hearts. So that we might live fully in God's love. Let us worship God.
Let's take the week in review. What do you regret doing or saying? What do you regret not saying or doing? Our prayer of confession is short so that we can reflect on these very things. Together, let us join in our prayer of confession as found in our bulletin. Let us pray. Father, forgive us for our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts, and our prejudice and contempt to those who differ from us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord. Now hear our personal and silent prayers. Amen. We pray these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Let us declare the grace of our God. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us sing to God for that great grace. And now, let us offer one another the peace of Christ, saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And to me, too. All right. Stay where you are. Wave and send the love. Tom, great love. Thank you. Christine, great love. You I can hug. Peace of Christ. Building that. Well, I don't see any girls and boys, but I know you got a message. Christine, he's not talking to you. It's a song of great pain and rejoicing that the mother Hannah said when she had a son. Hannah wanted this baby more than anything else in the world. And Hannah was so pleased when the baby was born, and she wrote this song of praise to Jesus. Or not to God, sorry. But then she did something that might seem kind of strange to us. She brought, as soon as her little boy was old enough, she brought him to the temple and left him with the priest, Eli. Now, in this day and age, we aren't as quick to share our children as in Samuel's age, but also in this day and age even, when a mother knows what's best for her child, 
in love, she will do that for thing for her child. And that is what Hannah did. Growing up in the temple was a great honor. Samuel had all he could want to eat, and he had learned how to read as a priest. And we know that it worked out well because Samuel grew up to be one of the greatest people in Israel in his time. And we know that Hannah kept loving Samuel because every year she sewed a new set of clothing for him and brought it up to visit him. So whereas this story may seem a little strange to us, it's not a story about a mother abandoning her child. It's a story about a mother having an open adoption for her son because she knew that was what best. Kids, do you know anyone who's adopted? If you look into their family, you will find a birth mother and an adoptive mother, a birth father and adoptive father who did what they thought was best for their child. And here we have an example of it right in our own Bible. Let's pray. Dear God, you've called us your adopted children. You've taken us as your very own and we thank you for that. And we thank you for the example you give us of Hannah. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us amid all the changing words of our generation. Speak your eternal word that does not change, that we may respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The first scripture lesson is from 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. Hear the word of God. I'm going to take off my muffler if I can. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows, the bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash, hip, ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Have you ever um, been afraid to speak up? Have you 
been afraid of asking an inappropriate question? Maybe somebody has asked you an inappropriate question. Some people have no filter, no trouble asking a single adult, so are you seeing anyone? And some people have no trouble saying to a couple, so when are you getting married? And you know what the next question is, when are you going to have a baby? My niece, Heather, had been married for several years. And though many people go around announcing, hey, we're trying to have a baby, she never did. She and Justin didn't share what they were going through. But one day, Heather called me in tears, and she cried. And I listened and we prayed. It seemed that they had indeed been trying for several years. She was discouraged. And then we prayed. And we, in a sense, spoke up because we knew God was listening. It was no temple. It was a tent. It was not a place of stone and mortar but it was the very tent, the um, tent of meeting, the tabernacle that went with these escaped Egyptian slaves and was with them for the 40 years they, they wandered in the wilderness and then finally when they were in the promised land, they set it up in Shiloh as a way um, to centralize things and this was the tent of the assembly, it was sacred. But this was also a, a challenging time for the people of God. Uh, the times were troubled. There was no central leadership in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes and rarely was it right in God's eyes. Eli, the priest, sat by the entrance of the tent, a place of honor. And while everybody else was sleeping off dinner and drink, a woman came tottering into the tent. And she faced the Holy of Holies and she knelt and she rocked. Eli didn't speak up at first, but he watched her. And then he judged her. Disgusting, he thought. Every year the people come up to worship and then they drink and they eat themselves into a deep sleep. She continued to knelt, kneel and rock back and forth. And the woman was muttering under her breath. Eli couldn't hear what she was saying, but he was just disgusted. And he went up to her. Clearly, she had drank a tall one. She must be drunk. And Eli said, stop drinking, sober up. How long are you going to continue making a spectacle of yourself? Well, Eli spoke up, but he misjudged her. Because the woman, sobbing full of emotion, turned and choked out these words. No, sir, I, I, I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm sad. I'm sorrowful. My soul is in anguish. I am grieving. Eli remembered himself. He, he took a second and remembered that he was a priest in the service of the Lord. And his mind and his heart shifted. And he said to her, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked. He had not only misjudged the woman, but now he prayed for her. He blessed her. And the woman, oh, you know how it is after a good cry. She took a deep breath and wiped her eyes and her tear-stained face and said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Eli and the woman both spoke up to God. And early the next morning, they all gathered to worship the Lord. And after worship, Eli watched the woman leave the camp. She was with a, a group, a small group. Um, it looked like a husband and a wife and a herd of their children. He didn't know what the relationship was there. 
But what he did notice is no child held the woman's hand. She was solitary, alone in the midst of a crowd. Eli wondered what the woman's story and sorrow had been about. And now for the rest of the story. It is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. Hear the word of the Lord. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. What a great story. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the woman's name was Hannah. She was infertile, but she became a mother. Her tears and sobbing was the personal torment of not only wanting children, but not being able to conceive them. But she was in a polygamous marriage. She was the infertile wife, while the fertile wife tortured Hannah about her condition. Can you imagine that? It's bad enough to not be able to conceive, but there's another person in your household who can, and they're beating you up with it. It's enough to bring anybody to their knees. Hannah named her son because I asked the Lord for him. Isn't that a great name, because I asked the Lord for him? I'm going to tell you how to pronounce it. We would pronounce it Samuel. <laughs> That's the Hebrew. So Hannah spoke up to God and trusted that God was listening. Have you ever cried out to God directly in prayer? Not just cried about a situation, but offered it up to God. God was listening. God is listening. There have been times when I've prayed up and I didn't know what the answer was going to be. And it's, it's a challenging place to be, is it not? The right response to answered prayer is to return the blessing. When God blesses you, you bless. And that's what we, how we close our service. We are blessed to be a blessing. But after about seven years of praying in the tabernacle, Hannah brought gifts to the Lord, a three-year-old bowl, a bushel of flour, a skin of wine, and a first grader. They were gifts to God. You see, Hannah had prayed for a baby and she said she would dedicate it to the Lord. So she was keeping her promise. She had been blessed and she's giving the promise. She's giving the child to God. So imagine Eli, seven years after this brief encounter with a stranger, blessing the stranger, she comes back and says to him, your blessing and my prayer have been honored, answered. Do you think Eli remembered her? I don't know. But then she sings a song, the song that Christine uh, read for us. It's a song of reversals, of God putting right what is wrong. She sang about a king who would set the world right. Did you notice it sounded a little bit like the Gospel of Luke when Mary is singing? These two songs are about two women who are blessed by God. And they see that their child will be part of the blessing of the world. So Hannah not only spoke up, she sang to the Lord. She praised God knowing that God was listening. So when my children went away to college, I texted them every day. And I was a wet mess on the day my kids went to kindergarten. I can't imagine Hannah turning over her child. She had other children, but children aren't expendable. Every child is precious. So I'm, I was uncomfortable with that part of the story, as Christine sh shared. 
but that was the culture and the time. Samuel was born in a period of history that was the hinge of history. It was like a doorway, a thing that you walked through in time. Because at that time, Israel did whatever was right in their own eyes, and it rarely was right in God's eyes. And they didn't see themselves as the people of God. They saw themselves as each individual tribe. The idea was God was supposed to be their king. And Samuel became a kingmaker. God led him to do this. But do you remember, it was a bad time. And the people no, wanted, no longer wanted God to lead them or wait for God's timing. Have you ever wanted something that was out of time? In the other words, it's not the moment when God is going to answer your prayer. You sometimes wonder, wait a minute, God, what are you doing here? God sometimes says to us, not yet. But in this case, the people of God prayed, called out again and again, and God said, okay, thy will be done. It didn't necessarily turn out good. As an adult, Samuel was a judge like Deborah and Samson. But I want to look at the element of prayer. This child Samuel grew up to be one of the most important people in Israel. But I want us to look about how we pray. This past week was really hard for me. It's been disgusting in our nation. When Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, I met people who said, I was praying that she would die before the election so we could get someone else on the bench. Yes. And when President Trump caught COVID-19, some said to me, I pray that he dies. We don't do that, folks. That is not worthy of the people of God. You can feel what you're feeling. But you don't parade those kind of prayers around. It just broke my heart. We do not exalt in the death of another. But we can carry those negative feelings, the things that are breaking our hearts, and we can even carry ugly prayers to the Lord. The Psalms are full of ugly prayers to the Lord. And, and God, we can pray knowing God is listening, but God is not abandoning us. Prayer is an honest conversation with God. You can tell God exactly how you feel about politics or whatever's going on in the world. Go ahead, speak up, God is listening. You can tell God with sobs, the misery you feel. Cry, weep, and rage to God. Go ahead. Speak up. God is listening. God is listening. But there is more than asking in a relationship. And there is more than praying than sending up requests. There is listening. There is listening prayer and there is praising prayer. When have you thanked God for answering prayers? So I generally forget until the end of the day. And sometimes I only thank God and praise God in retrospect because I'm looking back and then I think, oh, God answered my prayer. What about you? Do you ever say, wow, thank you. Wow, you're wonderful. So I want you to imagine Hannah's growing belly. Because as she, her pregnancy grows and matures and blossoms, I bet every morning she put her hand on her tummy and said, thank you, God, even when she had morning sickness. Now, Eli's, Eli's prayer was brief, but it was answered as well. When we speak up, when we pray up, say thank you, give a little praise. God is listening. 
Another way to thank God is by seeing God's work in another person. So we have beautiful new doors on our old entrance. They are glorious. So when I see them, I not only thank God, I'm thankful that we have an endowment. I'm thankful for the endowment ministry who helped fund this. I'm thankful for the session, the elders who are prayerful and discerning about how to progress in the project. I'm thankful for the folks on property who did not only the legwork, but su uh, supervised the final installation. Thank you, God. And by the way, Steve Kozich, who's now a moderator of property, he noticed that they put the doors on backwards. Steve noticed. Thank you, God. So let's not only praise God, let's let off a little esteem around here. Praise is letting off a little esteem. We need to thank each other. And we need to praise God for the way God uses us to bring forth the kingdom. So Eric Eichenberger, the adult son of an, a member of our church who's gone on to be with the Lord, Art Eichenberger, um, posted this. It takes six to eight pallbearers to lift you up when you're deceased. Imagine what you could accomplish if you had six to eight people lifting you up while you were living. That is the task of the church. So speak up. God is listening. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to stand, but I hope you will join me in affirming what we believe as Christians. Uh, this is taken from the Confession of 1967, and it talks about praising God. So... Let us begin. The arts, especially music and architecture, contribute to the praise and prayer of a Christian congregation when they help people to look beyond themselves to God and to the world, which is the object of God's love. Let us sing in our hearts or sing at home. In my life, Lord, be glorified. In our prayers today, we want to thank all the first responders, and I like to think that there are second responders, uh, people in the grocery stores, people who continue to do work that keeps the food chain going and our lives running smoothly. Um, there was a Facebook post on Marta Sundquist's uh, page that talked about a runaway boy in Rockford. His name is Sam. That's who I'm pray we're praying for. And we have a friend, a little infant boy named Calvin, who had a, a transplant, and he's back in the hospital. He's not two years old yet. Are there any other prayers in the room? Okay. Let us go to God in prayer. In the moment of silence, Lord God, we offer up to you our hearts, our minds, our body. Help us to live in praise of you. Help us to trust that you are listening. Enable us to wait 
when you say wait. Enable us to say thank you when our prayers have been answered. Remind us that you are always with us and that you are glorious. You are amazing. You are truly awesome. Help us to see your hand in the people around us. Bless Southminster as we endeavor to bless others. Help us to share the good news of your grace, your love, and your mercy. Um, we lift up all who are, um, well, we're all compounded. We're all compromised because of COVID-19, but some of us have catched it, have caught it. And <clears throat> Lord, we lift up all those people from the tippy top, our president, to people in my mother's complex who visited their children and came home with COVID. We bless Calvin. We bless Anne, who is a cancer warrior who's in hospice care. We bless Sam, who is a runaway, and we ask that you see to his troubles and you bring him home. We thank you for Marie Shepherd, who will be going home tomorrow from Windscape. We also pray for another uh, cancer warrior, Margie S. We lift up the friend of uh, the Ellsworth, Judith. We rejoice in the good news that Heidi's kidney infection has subsided and she is getting better. Thank you. We lift up Melissa Hurd, who has ongoing health issues. Thank you for Toby and walk with him as he prepares to meet you. And, and Lord, my, my heart aches for this nation. Yes, I have opinions, but I would have us come together. Our motto is, out of many comes one. Help us to be one in service of your love and your grace and your mercy. Bless all the world. Oh, and we rejoice because Guanabaco is opening their doors next week for worship. We bless all churches as they discern the best and the right way to move forward. And we lift up those that are in solitary situations. Hannah was alone in the midst of a crowd, but there are people who are living alone and feel it, hmm, feel it oppressive. You hear our prayers. You are listening. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. God bless all the world. Guard our children. Guide our leaders. And give us peace. Together we pray the disciples' prayer. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, let us respond to God's love and grace and the promise that God is listening to our prayers.
God, we return to you a small portion of what you've so abundantly given us. Take our money, our time, our talent, and our relationships and use them to further your kingdom here on earth, we ask. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing in our hearts or at home, God be with you till we meet again. So when I was speaking to my niece, Heather, I told her um, a little story that Gretchen and I, uh, Gretchen Fleming and I kind of chuckle about, Blair's aware of it. I have prayed for three babies to be born in Cuba. I have the, the wonder and the honor of being Wendy who prays for babies to come in the Havana Presbytery. <laughs> and they do come and they thrive. And my niece, as you know, had a baby last June and I got to go out and care for him a week in October. And I was so excited Friday night because she sent me a text with an ultrasound. She's gonna have another baby. And that just happened and we're just, what I mean that was just happened, it wasn't the typical we're trying for another baby thing. And she's thrilled and Justin's thrilled. We're all thrilled. Um, Prayer is difficult. I think there are a thousand things that make us distracted. So how might we be more purposeful in prayer? Purposeful meaning intentional. Um, so. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now go and serve the Lord.